I'm going to share with you how to build wealth using real estate. Let's do this. How's it going? My name is John and I am a mortgage broker located in Vancouver. If you want to learn ways to be approved for a mortgage, home buying tips, and other mortgage related stuff, start now by subscribing and clicking on the notification bell so it won't miss anything. Many people know that real estate is a great asset to build wealth with, but how do people actually do it? Well, in this video, I'm going to share with you the blueprint of how to make it happen. First off, you need to have cash on hand. You want at least 20%, and if you're in Vancouver, that's around $100,000. If you're looking to purchase something, that's $500,000. There's really no shortcut to it. You need to work hard, earn as much as possible, and save as much as possible. And with the savings you have, you need to invest it in mutual funds or the stock market that generates at least seven to eight percent annually. For me, when I was considering buying my first property, I had around 40,000 cash on hand. I started working and saving when I was in grade 10. And with all that cash, I invested in the stock market right after the 2008 financial crisis. In two years, I more than doubled my money and allowed me to have a good chunk of money as a down payment. With current uncertainties in the market, there may be great investment opportunities in the new future you can take advantage of. In order to qualify for a mortgage, you need to show the bank that you have good and stable income. The amount you can borrow is based on how much you make. Now, here's the trick. The mortgage you need to apply for is a re-advancing mortgage. Or in other words, the mortgage needs to be linked to a home line of credit. As you pay down the mortgage, the equity increases. However, most of the time, you can't get access to the equity unless you sell the property. With a home line of credit, you can redraw the money back out and use it for other purposes. After, say, five years, your mortgage has decreased and your property will have most likely gone up in value. So the equity has increased more than what you paid into the mortgage. Next, it's time to purchase your next property. Because you have a home line of credit, you, you can draw out the equity from your existing place and put it towards the new property. Again, there are no shortcuts. You may need to wait at least five years to consider your next property. This is a more difficult step because now your income needs to support two mortgages. If your income can't support it, you, know, you may want to purchase it with a family member or a trusted business partner. It's best to find a property where the rental income can offset your mortgage payments and taxes and strata fees and, and insurance costs. It's easier said than done though, especially in Vancouver. Due to higher prices, you may need to put in extra cash each month, but don't let that discourage you. Although the rent may not cover everything, you will get it back in the increase in property value if you had it for five to 10 years. I find that rental income for studios and one bedrooms have the best chance to offset all the monthly expenses. And then do the same thing. Refinance your properties, attach a home line of credit, and repeat the process. It sounds easy, but what mistakes do people usually make? Well, like I said before, people can make a mistake right away by not having a home line of credit. And people tend to maximize their borrowing power for their first home and utilize all the ability to borrow money on the home they live in. In order to build wealth, you need two properties because you need one for a place to live in and the other is for investment purposes. You can sell the rental property, cash out, and still have a place to live in. When you're investing, tax is also a cost to consider. People tend to accumulate more and more properties because it's actually best to keep the properties and keep refinancing it instead of selling. 
This will avoid capital gains tax. You can actually deduct the interest portion of the mortgage to offset your rental income. As time goes on, you accumulate more properties and you'll be profiting from the power of leveraging. Let's go back to the $500,000 example. You put down $100,000, but say five years from now, the place is now $600,000. Well, people may say, oh wow, it's gone up $100,000, so you made 20% return. Yes, in a way that's correct. But remember, you actually just put down only 100,000. So in a way, your return is actually 100%. And there you go. We just went over how to build wealth using real estate. Of course, I can't cover everything in one video. So feel free to contact me or comment below if you have any questions. And please remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel to learn more and make sure you click on the notification bell so you won't miss a video. I'm John Lee, mortgage broker and CEO of Rise Mortgage. We are always achieving your approval.